welcome to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, um, to our online event um, within the framework of the fifth anniversary of the Berko Foundation. Today, our topic will relate to the Georgian Abkhaz conflict and the question how to gain confidence, regain confidence, build up trust. And um, uh, the Berko Foundation, as you may know, was uh, founded by Mr. Georg Zundel in 1972, he passed away uh, a few years ago in 2007. I myself joined the Berko Foundation 29 years ago, so I feel close <laughs> to this uh, uh, organization. And I remember very well how we celebrated um, and prepared for the 25th anniversary. At that time, the director, uh, Norbert Ropers, was preparing to engage in the Georgian APRAS dialogues. And since then, actually, the Berkhoff Foundation works in these communities. And before I introduce our guests, let me say some technical issues about the structure of that meetings. And we having an audience which can participate in the discussion by writing comments or questions. The working languages of this meeting are English and Russian. And we, the people who are discussing the issues, will not see the questions. A colleague of mine, um, Itzhak Rusbakov, will analyze and read your chat comments and comes in later um, by presenting some of those. Um, well, we are also having, we could have now a little questionnaire for you to see um, who is all participating in uh, this um, uh, you know, event. So if my colleagues are showing you this link, you can um, participate in this poll. As I said, ah, there it is. Well, Okay. Well, um, as I said, this is uh, the working languages of this meeting are Russian and English. We are having two interpreters with us who are working on two separated channels. So you should choose now um, the exact channel for, for your right question, uh, for your right language. And I think we are waiting for the results soon of this, but it will of the questionnaire, but it will come in. Well, let me let me start to introduce our guests, actually. And it would be nice. Uh, I know that was. I mean, could we see all our guests now in this um, with a video? I think, and not just one by one. That's great. It works. Well, let me start um, in the very east. Um, from Tbilisi, we are having here today Ucha Nanuashvili. Um, Ucha is a long time, for decades, he's involved in Georgian APRAS issues um, uh, since from 2012 to 2017. He was ombudsman in Georgia. Uh, he was ombudsman of Georgia and he's the founder and the director of the Democratic Research Institute. Ucha, great to have you with us. Welcome. Um, also from Tbilisi, but actually born in Sukhumi, I welcome Misha Jacqua. Um, Misha is also um, for many, many years um, a participant in uh, Georgian APRAS meetings and dialogues. And he, he worked as a lawyer for the uh, Georgian Young Lawyers Association uh, for several years now. He works for the Berko Foundation and is one of our coordinators in um, Tbilisi uh, and Georgia. Misha, warm welcome to you. Hi. Um, also based in Tbilisi currently is Oleg Potik. He is the UN Peace and Development Advisor for the South Caucasus. And he engaged now in recent years very much with 
several meetings and conferences um, on these issues and um, how to build and um, energize uh, confidence building initiatives and dynamics. And um, I would say Oleg seeks for inspiration and tries to um, create dynamic situations. Oleg, warm welcome to you. And you. from Suhum, I welcome Dalila Pilia. Um, Dalila is the founder and the director of um, an APRAS NGO called World Without Violence. She also is associate professor and lecturer at APRAS State University. And like Misha, she works for many years now and is one of the coordinators of Berko Foundation's work in Aprasia. And Dalila, it's great to see you here in our online round table. Welcome. Last but not least is the journalist Inal Khashik. Um, Inal, based in Sukhum, is chief editor of an independent analytical newspaper called Chemskaya Pravda. And if I may say so, Inal is a man that not shies away to address complex issues. Inal, great to have you with us here today. Welcome. Well, my name is Oliver Bulli. And I, um, today I'm not a student at the Berkow Foundation anymore. Um, I'm the head of the Europe unit and I moderate this meeting here today. I am trying to be an active um, moderator, um, so we'll see. So let's start, let's start with the discussion. We are having more or less one hour, 50 minutes for us. Then we are trying to um, relate to the questions from the audience. And a last word maybe to our interpreters. It's also like telling to myself, if things are too fast for you, please give the speaker yourself a feedback, you know, because I cannot uh, see this or hear this. All right. Um, well, when it comes to the issue- Thank you. <laughs> when it comes to the issue of confidence and confidence building, I like to say or start by saying that actually large parts of the Georgian population and large parts of the APRAS population have actually quite a similar attitude towards it uh, because they actually think it's not needed. Uh, on, the APRA, on the Georgian side, we could say there is quite a, a notion of brothers, APRAS and Georgians are brothers and sisters. They lived in harmony for a long time. The problem is actually not really there. It's more a problem of external intervention and if you have this understanding, then of course confidence building is actually not what is needed. On the APRA side, for totally different reasons, people have the same aptitude, many. There is an understanding, there was a war, the war 1992, 1993. Aprasia won it. Um, with 2008, Aprasia gained some state recognition. And for them, the conflict is basically over. And also for these groups, um, the issue is not anymore to relate to Georgia or to talk to Georgians. So put it this way, these are at least, these are different, but somehow similar challenges we are facing if we come to the question of confidence building. So let me start with Misha. Misha, what, how, how do you see it? Um, is, there, is there a need for confidence building? And if so, why? Greetings, thank you Oliver for questions and thanks to the thank Foundation uh, for, uh, for inviting our uh, guests to webinar. The question that you asked uh, can have very simple, straightforward uh, answer. We need peacekeeping uh, process which will make sure long time peace 
But in our societies, we also come across with. Нашим обществом мы еще стали знакомы друг с другом. Они менее понимают. Извини, we having problem with the translate. I hear you now in Russian. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Может быть, начнете с самого начала. Я прошу, прошу, прошу прощения. Да, да. Можете или начать сначала, если вас не затруднит сначала, если начнете. So, the peacekeeping process that we need. Um, we have started to recognize each other and started to uh, get to know each other. And, but we less uh, understand what uh, is perceived in certain segments of society because they simply don't know each other. And as a result, we are facing the emotions and statements that we see in publicly, uh, generally. And the function of peacekeeping uh, process is, uh, uh, is not just to adjust to the statements, but uh, to investigate the causes why these emotions uh, came, came up and try to understand and explain these positions can be done by us because we are the inheritance of all these processes. Myself, as a participant of Natterbeck process, in this process, we try to listen to each other and take narrative and geographical areas and talk to people who went through this conflict and they had to leave uh, lives as a result of the conflict. And we meet with them and we conduct discussions and based on their um, attitudes, we raise questions, quite painful questions, which are very important to both societies, Georgians and Abkhaz societies. And they actually show their positioning. And we try to find the dialogue of past and what they had to go through. And, and, and we need to continue doing this about present, how present is being formed, how present emotions are being formed, which basically influence the reality and uh, present. When this process moves to a bilateral level, uh, people can uh, try to explain to another party that what is behind their position. And, and after that, the process of understanding uh, comes up. What is behind this? And then the perception comes in and what steps can be taken and what steps can be understood in different societies or different segments. Let me bring you certain examples. Uh, for present uh, times, for long times, basically, we see that positions are tightly linked to uh, people who uh, suffered of, from war and they are openly talking to each other about this and they become more in loop and more uh, understandable about that and then they they feel a uh, certain fear um, to uh, go back to Abkhazia and the same um, goes for another party and for IDPs is the same and when we observe 
um, and these revanchist or aggressive statements are quite rare, basically. And what we see publicly, we also see some sentimental um, approaches and we see some realistic issues behind these uh, things. And uh, if we dive into this issue, if we don't dive into this issue, then we we get stuck in formal uh, formal approaches, and it may even lead to uh, repetition of the tragedy, and uh, which is also positioning itself quite rarely. And um, uh, Georgian participants have the same, basically, sentiments as uh, Abkhaz. Uh, uh, all the generation who went through war in 90s. There is a perception that there is a Georgia, which is a potential aggressor and has potential aggressive sentiment. Yes. And uh, because there is no such question in Georgian society among youngsters. They don't think like that, and they don't really uh, meet this type of positioning. And that's why we need to create direct channels of communication so that we need to have uh, uh, this type of sentiments. We could have both type of sentiments and how, uh, what has been changed and uh, how far young generation is from this type of sentiments. Misha, may I come in? So I see you are highlighting the, the need, for, you know, you, you several times you highlighted this emotional element. Yeah, and, and an emotional element of understanding each other's emotions and a process of creating empathy. Huh? Empathy. Yeah, empathy. Uh, empathy. So, is this, but what do you do with those people who are still uh, holding up the notion very much of there is harmony, there is no problem between Georgian and Abkhaz? Yeah, how do you address this element? Who sees the problem only as an external, as an external intervention? Um. Наш ответ на этот вопрос и мы пытаемся вовлекать таких людей, которые так размышляют, но с другой стороны мы не ходим в спор с ними, потому что лично я считаю, что за этими позициями тоже помимо политических и политических моментов также стоят и человеческие переживания и мы пытаемся раскрыть разговор об этом потому что то же самое то же самое когда мы слушаем их отношения к третьему лицу я не думаем что мы считаем, я считаю, что это тоже связано с их переживаниями, с их эмоциональным э, шоком, который они перенесли во время 2008 э, войны 2008 года. А, но мы тоже, э, я извиняюсь, я слышу английский перевод. Э, нет, вы должны переключиться. Oh, and so, and... Uh, yeah, be uh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so now it's now it's English. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to open up this uh, idea. We say, uh, we talk about the causes uh, of this because it has its even causes uh, emotional shocks that younger generation has had to go through in 2008 
when they participate in this process, they see clearly the same emotional shocks uh, where uh, in 92, 93, the same positioning um, had this, the first war, like the war in 2008. Why for Abkhaz society this is true and this is uh, really influential and influences their today's <clears throat> status? What does it change? This is a quite often asked question. Thank you, Misha. We come to this um, elements a little later. Let me move on um, and um, stay a little moment more in Tbilisi. Ucha, you are one of the persons, you know, even back in the year 2007, you are one of the initiators of what was called then in English, the Sorry campaign. Or in Georgian, forgive my pronunciation, the Bodishi, Bodishi campaign. Yeah? Um, this campaign is certainly directing to the past and to the war 1992-1993. Um, what, what were your thoughts? What were your hopes at the time um, with this campaign? Why did you do it? Um, thank you all for organizing this event. Yes. Panelists and participants. Yes, so the campaign was launched in March 2007 uh, by the Human Rights Center, where I worked at the time as a director. And our idea was uh, you know, to change the dynamics and directions of the relationships between Abkhazia and Georgia. And the uh, main messages of this initiative included admitting and apologizing for past wrongs, past mistakes and crimes during the war, and also deconstructing enemy images. We said uh, sorry to Abkhaz people uh, for not having kind in during the war, or not having been able to avoid the disaster and the war, and it, it was a public. Um, we have said we, we started some kind of discussion in Georgian society. We started with an appeal to Abkhaz people with uh, such a letter, but in fact, you know, this campaign was addressed to Georgian society. Georgian society, why? Because we wanted to have a discussion among Georgian society, among Georgians about our mistakes, about our crimes, about our, uh, uh, our uh, problems, and to have some kind of self-critical approach. And we wanted to encourage people to think about the horrors of the war and the mistakes we made in the early 90s. And at the same time, we also started uh, to polarize Abkhazian language and Abkhazian culture in Tbilisi. We have published first Abkhazian web website, um, perhaps Abkhazian newspaper, also prepared some events and publications in different languages, including on Mubajis, uh, genocide, etc. And but the main idea uh, behind this campaign was to have to change a Georgian society, to rethink about the war, and to have a frank and open discussion in Georgia about the causes of the conflict, about the war and about the you no know, reasons why we started this war, in fact, and to have a uh, like, frank discussion with, first of all, with Georgia and, and then, of course, with Abkhaz uh, and people. How, how were you, I mean, how did it go? I mean, in the year 2007, yes. I remember yes. the, um, in the Georgian public, the notion of the Georgian Abkhaz war, 1992-93, was still very um, established. Yeah, you know, yes. while it, it got lost somehow, it disappeared in the discourse um, after 2008 a lot. Yeah? So how, how did it go into your campaign? Well, in fact, we had very negative reactions in Georgian society majority of population, not all population, you know, including high-ranking officials, even President Saakashvili at that time has criticized the campaign twice. 
And we had also like quite negative uh, comments from different politicians, including you know, like some politicians and peace. Uh, and uh, yes, um, but also we had some positive reactions in Georgian society. And, um, but you know, like it was, a, in, in fact, this campaign has succeeded. Despite the fact that it was not published, despite the fact that main, mainstream media has blocked information about the Sori campaign because it was not popular, it was not safe that time in Georgia you know, to say sorry and to discuss issues like this in Georgian society. And especially Georgian media, only few small, like let's say, radio stations, Radio Liberty, and uh, some online editions, you know, highlighted this. And, and, yes, and actions and campaign, but majority of television so society were not happy about this uh, action. But anyway, this um, campaign, in my opinion, has succeeded because um, many people speak about it now. And uh, yes, and, um, and now everybody thinks about it. In fact, it was a provocation in positive, and this provocation worked, you know. It was a concept, you know, to Georgia society uh, to see that is this, you know, um, yes, the time, 14 years ago, the story was tabooed. Mm -hmm. Speaking about this topic was, was neither popular at the time and, yes, and, but, you know, slowly we started some different, different public actions, you know, and we had at the time quite a militarist approach in the Georgia society. We had a different government and it was not easy for us. Even we also experienced some kind of intimidation, treats and we were declared as a traitors and my enemies of the state, etc. But at the end, you know, we can see that this campaign has worked because we can see some results now. You know, we can use the space today to talk about these issues. You with, is bigger in Georgia today. Yeah, I think that today the situation has absolutely changed. You know, and for us it was that time. It was main purpose for us was to, you know, we to have a message to Abkhaz people and Georgian people that. Uh, there is a different Georgia too. There are other people in this country with different ideas, with different mentality or visions and values. And most of the Georgian society at that time were quite negative uh, about this campaign. But now we can see that step by step the situation has changed, especially after 2008 war. And uh, we can see that this uh, um, chain of hate, hatred, has break you know, and we can see that, you know, as a uh, Georgian society has acknowledged some problems, you know, and you can see that we, this, this campaign has some kind of follow up and um, this, it, it also, you know, and what was the idea behind this campaign that after this physical violence and war and conflict uh, still continues, you know, in the heart of the people and um, we, we, we try to explain people that hatred and anger, anger controls human lives for a long time. And those emotions paralyze people and make them hostages um, um, you know, of hatred. And when a person is uh, under this, you know, occupied with anger and hatred, he or she cannot clearly evaluate situation. And that's why sorry campaign might be the first, first step uh, um, to break this negative circle, and it creates I, awareness. I, I, yes. I think so. Is there potential? I think so too. Um, I mean, also the Soviet campaign, personally for me as an observer, yeah, uh, was an important milestone in all these decades, yeah, and inspired us uh, to think about new methods. You know, how to address these difficult issues because it's difficult to address it for both sides and and actually um, I like them to move to Suhum and to see you know maybe Dalila we we heard um, we heard how also difficult it is or is it difficult to talk about the past in Abkhazia and on the one hand as an external observer I would say um, the Abkhaz society permanently people 
permanently relate to the past, to the violent past. The war is very present in the minds and hearts of APRA's people, today a little less than 10 years ago, but still. Yet still, it's really not easy to address these topics in a constructive way. And also not when it comes to relation to Georgians. So what, what, where do you see Aprasia today? Or oh, the Aprasia people, so to speak. Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Очень приятно видеть вас всех. Не менее важна та проблема, которая обсуждается, дискутируется, несмотря на то, что такое немалое количество лет прошло со дня грузино-абхазской войны, но... Извините, пожалуйста, do we have interpretation? I don't get it on English. Uh, on it's, it's going in English. English? Okay. English. Yes, please. If we are saying about peacekeeping or peace loving, what uh, Abkha society manifests from this point of view. You can't really describe this in one, two words. This is just contradicting. This is just different problems within the society. And, and this is quite uh, normal to any society. And because there is no um, single unified um, uh, issue to this type. Uh, and if we talk about um, peacekeeping and if we could decide this by workshops, it could have been great, but um, the problem is much broader, much more complex and much more complicated because the war itself was on Abkhaz territory and uh, you know very well, you've been to Abkhazia several times and uh, there is no single family that uh, has not unfortunately suffered from um, uh, war and but we have to move away from war rhetoric and we need to move away from tragedy and not to hold a knife uh, in your pocket or because this is self-destructing. And as for our process, Misha was saying about IDPs and uh, refugees, and this is a tragic fate of entire generation because war ends uh, and those who were uh, instigators of the war or uh, uh, they left, uh, and uh, we have a quite informed, well-informed audience. And I was a member of many process when uh, Supreme Council on Refugees was um, conducting many seminars on uh, receiving back IDPs because Georgian political elite convinced this category that they have to go to Abkhazia altogether. This is one. And this was just elaborated for uh, uh, IDPs and refugees. And uh, the, the, the stumbling point was where they're going, back to Georgia or Abkhazia? Nobody wanted to say that they were going back to, to Abkhazia. They wanted to stay in Georgia and 
return back to Georgia. But the real si story is and the real situation is that we are divided by first war. There are many legal issues, international relation issues, but there have been no single relation with uh, Abkhazia for 27 years. But those who wanted to come to live in Abkhazia, they can do it. And there is a big cluster of people who want to come and live and, and they perceive this as their motherland. I have talked to them personally and they they accept this. As for the Hatams, uh, this is a step that we need to underline as a positive uh, development. However, Along with that, uh, behind this uh, call, uh, there were several calls to people. I have seen it myself. I'm, I'm not so talking about the, uh, what was the rationale behind that. And I had my negative reservations about that. But I want to say, that it's good that things like that comes up. But uh, publishing books in Abkhazian language and um, groups are being formed uh, to learn Abkhazian lang Abkhaz language and uh, creating groups to preserve Abkhazian culture, Abkhaz culture. And Georgi Anchabadze is is actually is, is very helpful and he's trying to provide some well we became a, a, a people without history and so you know what was going on in Abkhazia and what is really taking place I would have uh, accept this if there was nothing uh, political uh, along with that. Why, why they're not uh, receiving this in Abkhazia? May I ask you, we, we heard a bit from Ucha, from Misha, we heard that there is more space today in Georgia to discuss the past, um, more than 10 years ago or so. Um, I actually agree to this. What is your assessment of that? Do Abkhaz find serious discussion partners in Georgian society who want to discuss openly the suffering and the happenings on both sides? It is difficult to say because I don't know very well Georgian society. However, with my colleagues that I work with, uh, there are several of them uh, who um, take our problems seriously. Uh, and the same is true uh, from our side, the tragedy that Georgian people uh, went through. And we welcome these peacekeeping initiatives. Uh, and we accepted this uh, peace loving or peace uh, and uh, respect to each other. And we started to talk about very difficult moments of our life, uh, military, during the military campaign or after military campaign, but we still respect each other. But there is, um, uh, people change and and the youngsters uh, become older and other generation who hasn't seen uh, uh, war uh, it would be disaster to say that Abkhazia lives only with uh, memories of war and we know that we need to keep going we need to keep working 
because we don't have any leverages of influencing political decisions. And this is not our basically task, but within the frames of our opportunities, we can engage as much stakeholders or players, if you like. Um, it would be uh, it would be a great uh, great uh, benefit of our project yes Dalila, спасибо. about possible uh, further steps in the future or leverage we can speak a little later ina let me come to you i mean we heard um that there is in a society a good amount of skepticism um, when it comes to any kind of relations with Georgian, Georgian people, discussions, engagement, mm, is the interpretation working? Okay. Um, where do you see the logic there? I mean, I mean, these people have a good reason to be skeptical, but how do you see this? What does it mean, the skepticism within APRA society? Or for Abkhaz politics, for the whole situation. Uh, Oliver, I have uh, problems with interpretation, but mm -hmm. but I will. Uh, re can you repeat, repeat? Uh, this? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I'm relating to this skepticism within Abkhaz society yeah, about dialogue or discussions with Jordan society. And my question is, what, what does it mean for the, you know, why is this? And what does it do with the Abkhaz society as such, this skepticism? Я понял, Оливер, у меня просто проблема с переводом английского, русский перевод я не слышу, поэтому мне сложно... I don't see Russian, I don't, I, I can't hear. I can't hear Russian. Translation. Is it um, the channels? Are we on the right channels with translation? I mean, I'm now not knowing what's going on. Is this technical or... He, uh, he doesn't hear translation, so I'm translating for him your question. You are translating? He, he's just on all wrong. Yeah, let, let, let me just to translate. Yeah, to существует skepticism. Then go on. Общество, общество по поводу диалога с грузинским обществом. Откуда этот скептицизм и как вы смотрите на этот скептицизм? А правда, no. мешает ли он процессу? И вопрос был об этом, Оливера, да? Ну, да. Скептицизм and um, of course, I don't have any doubts that there were some sincere campaigns about good things, but uh, a political elite of Georgia and um, um, maybe others, they also um, skeptical. And in 1993, when war uh, ended up to 2008, uh, it is being forgotten. And there was always a danger of new war. And, and there were, uh, Abkhazia was not the initiating any campaign, military campaigns, but this was coming rather from Georgia. Uh, a microphone is... Uh, After that, there is no threat of war. But however, 
But anyways, uh, skepticism is still there. And I think that we need to understand that Georgia has been transformed uh, after 2008 and all rhetoric of uh, uh, whoever it is, opposition or position, and they say that uh, uh, Abkhazia is occupied territory and ideological um, machine has been working uh, still in the same tune and they still um, believe that Abkhazia is occupied territory and and Abkhaz are suffering from this uh, occupation and they are silent and they cannot really make any difference. And, and this rhetoric is, is very difficult, of course. Yes. And there's no, uh, the uh, Abkhaz society does not believe Georgian uh, and Mikhail Saakashvili in, invented this uh, for Abkhazia and for South Ossetia. And, but now we can see that uh, this, uh, this slogan that Russia is actually the third party and is not interested to resolve the, uh, and there's a loan occupation and, and there's no other new messages that are coming. Uh, and that's why uh, there is a, some skepticism um, in Abkhaz society. Half a, half a year ago, there were certain uh, uh, actions that when I can, was brought to Ilori uh, church and there was a attempt to uh, reconcile with Abkhaz clergy and this should not be done by um, populist um, some politicians but this should be uh, 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 this should be uh, uh, an opinion of jo uh, Georgia's political elite. And the position of Georgian political establishment is quite simple. It hasn't been changed since Shevard Nadze that Abkhazia should be part of uh, Georgia. Maybe rhetoric became softer, uh, milder, but it hasn't been changed. And this is why there is a skepticism, because half a year ago in Abkhazia, we received concept paper, president signed uh, foreign uh, relations uh, concept signed by president of Abkhazia and Abkhazia um, uh, denied to engage in negotiation uh, with Georgia, and this was based on the Abkhaz population. But at the same ties, time, um, Tbilisi hasn't heard anything constructive, uh, but this uh, concept signed by Aslan Bjania um, was uh, perceived as a capitulation and 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 the next step would be maybe Abkhazia will become will go back to Georgia under Georgia's ju jurisdiction. When when uh, Georgian society or political establishment uh, wrongly perceives um, some uh, peacekeeping issues, uh, they cannot really uh, perceive any signals as a sign of. A weakness. So we leave uh, behind this um, Abkhaz uh, Georgia uh, negotiation uh, process. And we cannot keep living in illusion that 
uh, something uh, misunderstanding happened that uh, Abkhaz and Georgians uh, got into fight and it will pass on and everything will be fine. But this is just an illusion and nothing good will come out of this illusion. Yeah, I do understand that, that there is Hatamas in when Georgians apologize to Abkhaz. But uh, Georgians should actually discuss why they are uh, apologizing and what was the mistake that they have made. And maybe we can come to, uh, well, our discussion should have depths or we should go in depth and look into uh, deeper into the causes of the conflict. Uh, and, and any idea that uh, uh, Abkhazia will go back to Georgia, that's the main cause of skepticism. And this is what is really related with the dialogue. And that's why Georgians always um, uh, talk about restoration of territorial integrity. And this is really, uh, this has no perspective and no future. And that's where we should really look into the cause, the real cause of the skepticism. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I mean, your, your statement went through many levels of um, actors, so to speak. Yeah, you, you should. Um, and uh, the official positions both sides have are totally clear. And, uh, and you're right, I totally agree that um, populistic attitudes, populistic initiatives you mentioned, for instance, the uh, Ilori icon issue, but we could also say something like the Shipsia campaign from Georgia. Yeah, um, I hope the pronunciation was good. In English, the Hello campaign um, that was once made by Georgia. It's a campaign that um, ignores the sorrow of the past and is actually just built on the assumption of you know brother and sisterhood and as you described the apras are somehow occupied and now comes a nice and friendly shipsia from georgia and i understand that in such a context then this populistic um, initiatives even if they may have a positive intention are not well received on the other hand, I see clearly also here from the speakers, the space um, where we can dive, not just in the causes of the conflict, but also what the conflict did with the people in Abkhazia and in Georgia. And also, and that many people suffered from this dynamics, although they were not fighting. Um, let me go, let me address our last guest. It was a long time, Oleg, you must uh, do wait. And it's great that you could jump in <laughs> with the interpretation. It's always good to have uh, other third party at the table. Oleg, you, you've been addressing in your position um, the topic with dealing with the past, as you called it. Uh, you have organized several um, several conferences and meetings in Georgia on this issue. Obviously, you think that confidence building on the basis of mutual interest is not enough. And that initial, that emotional and also, you know, the experiences of people and uh, the reality of the past needs to be addressed. It's not an easy discussion, right? It's not an easy process to start and uh, to engage. What are your, no, Yes, yes, I believe that this is, the process is not easy. And Berko Foundation job, which is done, is very uh, important job. It's a leader in this area and 
important element of this is that the engagement is quite wide, a wide number of people. I think Misha mentioned that uh, past is not just past, is is a is a part of the present policy that we have to talk about and and the UN system tries also to support uh, civil society and in terms of work with past, not only in Georgia, but also in Armenia and Azerbaijan. And we believe that it is important. And I do not really agree, uh, Oliver, that uh, systematic discussion or ecological problems or economic problems or medical problems issues, they're not effective. Mm. They actually conducive uh, to building trust, confidence. What Berkov Foundation does is really very good supplementary work. Uh, uh, people look not only just in economic interests and other interests, but also it is important important to have empathy right to feel in a in a global uh, un system in latin america in other places dialogue only thematic dialogue uh, is not enough and dialogue which is uh, which uh, conducive for empathy elaboration is much more effective what I wanted to say also, uh, what Inal mentioned, as an observer, I think there, there, there are some very important discussions in Georgia and uh, uh, civil society organizations are discussing uh, these issues and Ucha can also elaborate on that. And this, the campaign of uh, sorry uh, is uh, something uh, really fragmental. There will be some others. Uh, and, uh, and fundamental political problem, uh, of course, uh, could be different with respect to status, political status. But there's between these political issues, there is a big, um, big um, uh, area or room for improvement. And Georgian intellectuals really say that um, uh, people to people uh, relationship and dialogue, uh, when uh, people come to Georgia to have tests on COVID 19, and this is something uh, very small part of the outcome. And what needs to be changed is the, is the perception to the status so that we can transform the conflict. Transformation of conflict can also be political. However, we would rather have um, uh, the same um, uh, developments as it is in uh, Transnistria or other uh, conflict areas, and uh, we can do that. I think I would I would love to believe that Georgian society work on um, transformation of uh, Abkhaz Georgian conflict, but uh, it's not just recognition of uh, Abkhaz statehood. If we talk about um, normal relationship establishment, there is a big uh, stumbling points or barriers that Georgia has built itself. We need to look into this law on occupation and basically Abkhaz can only breathe without permission of Georgia if we look at the law on occupation. So other things yeah, I just understand, I understand. Um, it's totally they cannot go to study, they cannot go to uh, travel, they cannot 
travel. There is many things that are not related to recognition or, or um, acknowledgement. So Georgian society should really um, uh, make uh, change that this law on occupation uh, should go away because this is uh, this is wrong for Georgians. Uh, Georgians um, misleading for Georgians itself. Uh, because I understand, and of so this is basically a, a bad uh, approach that you can you can uh, get Abkhazia back only by having this law on occupation. Yeah. I mean, it's it's clear um, w there is a legal and a structure and and concept papers that are affecting the whole way uh, the current conflict dynamic. The law on occupation, you said. Occupied territories. There are other papers. They exist on the Georgian side. Papers exist on the upper side. You know, like the step towards the future. But let's not go into the details of this at the moment. Yeah, um, because we wanted to see of what the potential of civil society. And there is one question that's in the room, and it is the question of how do we relate? How do both societies? relate to the violent past and to violence that may be used today. Because we don't speak about the past just uh, for historical reasons. It's a question that is, the question in the room is, will a kind of Georgian Abbas war ever repeat? And this is a question that must be answered uh, because if there is uncertainty on this question, how should you cooperate? How should you live? The situation we have today cannot be called peace. The absence of war is not peace. So Inal, you highlighted the, that the conflict goes on and that it also contains maybe element of brutality you know, of, of other forms of violence. However, how do we transform it? And just to say the laws should all change is not working. We need to have more understanding of who, who we are and how we would like to relate to this past and to the future. And I think I, I heard from several speakers here. Um, let me ask you, uh, let me check because it was maybe lost in the translation. I'm not sure. Ucha, do you think the Georgian society would ever attack Abkhazia again? Um, you know, uh, something has changed here. And if you remember, you know, some years ago, 10, 20 years ago, we had the main slogan we will gain Abkhazia back. No, it was about the land. And uh, now I think the majority of Georgia are talking about their relationship with Abkhazia, to regain trust with Abkhazia. And this is, uh, I think, main changes which happened maybe during the last 10 years. And society is not in favor of revenge. Uh, and uh, this is a serious change, you know. And uh, why is this? Uh, happens that uh, we have some institutions already. We have civil society, which is quite active. Media also is quite active. Um, so different initiatives. And uh, uh, so now that's why you know, like, so we can see that there are some chances for yes. cooperation and changes. Yes. But when we may, yes, but, yeah. Thanks. Let me, I mean, we could, um, sometimes it's always good to understand why something is, yeah? Yeah. but it's not always needed to know it exactly. You know, I love my wife, but I haven't still understood actually why is it. Um, let me double check. Let me double check with Misha. What do you think? Will Georgia attack Abkhazia? Will there be another war? Um, 
I think that there is, there is no uh, indications to think about that. Maybe in some circles uh, they think about it, but our society, uh, we have passed this when there was a war in Karabakh, mountainous Karabakh, and uh, even there, there was no uh, any moment of uh, dealing uh, with military solution. I think this was a quite a big test that we have passed, and I agree with Ucha that that's why we need to talk to each other and uh, to extend this uh, peacekeeping process. We uh, will have to deal with politicians uh, and we will always have to deal with even the politicians who are oriented on conflicts, but that's not the fact, right? That there will be war. I mean, it's a difficult situation, uh, not, it's, a diffi it's a challenging question, but I, I actually like to know, it would be good to hear, Dalila, Inal, maybe Dalila, you first. Uh, what do you think? Do you think a Georgian Appas war would repeat? Or how... Ah. Oh, I'm getting the sign on. Uh, uh, first, what comes into my mind is God forbids. Oh, God forbids. That as a woman, so I don't really want to see a war. Or even today, what we've been talking about today, and, and this, uh, what happened in Karabakh quite recently, we have discussed after, uh, shortly after um, Karabakh conflict, we both uh, from Georgian side and from Abkhaz side, we came together and talked about this. And we agreed that we, you can't really get closer to peace uh, with war. And, there is an interview we always listen to a young man who was um, uh, fighting in Abkhazia. Uh, he wasn't going to go to war in Abkhazia, but his friend was killed and he went there to uh, seek revenge. But he, during the war, he lost many other friends. And his uh, resume was basically that you can't really get achieve uh, peace with war rhetoric. You have to ha explore other uh, options and other um, uh, concepts. And, um, and I would like to hope that our work and using the outcomes of our work, there are many of us and uh, both in Abkhazia and in Georgia. And if even if they're not active, they may not look active, but they really, really understand that there is no alternative to peace because we have already seen in the past what war was. And uh, we know how dangerous is the war rhetoric is. And and, and it, is, uh, it, it is very um, provoking, uh, so to speak. And, uh, and even uh, some peacekeeping uh, steps uh, from uh, uh, civil society organizations can bear some results. And we always say, uh, look at the Georgia uh, scientists, and they are basically uh, um, propagating for peace. And uh, if we see that, we will always echo that. And this um, um, is seeking revenge is very dangerous for Georgia. Uh, and for Abkhazia, and Abkhazia is a very small country, and Georgia is not a China either. 
So, and to survive the second war through second war would be very difficult for both Georgians and for Abkhaz. And we have seen it once, right? Why do we need to uh, think about it again? So, but I would like to use this moment um, from political elites. Uh, we don't see they're really, uh, they're not eager to see peace and the Geneva process is not really productively used because this, but, and, and this is the only, uh, the only platform that they can use. And we really want to uh, exp uh, expand this. And maybe I personally, uh, confident that our process uh, uh, more and more people are eager to uh, get in and these people are uh, the ones that they don't want to go to war and this is really the number one step of uh, Thanks a lot. You opened up new process. even covering Geneva, which is really another topic. Listen, the question on war on will it repeat is not answered. So it's a process. But I also think as an observer and having heard you, uh, something has changed. We are not in the year 2007. Um, uh, and, and we are having in both societies, this is my conviction, the potential to really address the problems in a civilized way. And of course, this will include discussion on laws and policy, or also on issues, you know, we hear every day um, in the news, the life of Georgians in Abkhazia. There are many issues, but as long as we find a way really to get agreement on that the problem must, that everybody believes that there is enough goodwill to solve the problems equally, I think it's a great step. And we are close to this actually, the conditions are there. My dear guests, we are having here still the questions and answers which we must come in. And um, so I would like to ask my colleague to you know, give us a little insights and present some of them, please. Thank you very much for very interesting discussions. We have coming, uh, we have got 50 questions. I will take at least two questions, which relates to our topic. And I hope that this is not the final meeting. Uh, the question number one is that we've been to discussing. Dalila and Misha uh, Jahua talked about the process. And other speakers also mentioned that the, the question is, do you feel the change from uh, from participants and what was the most difficult uh, in that change and Misha said and I will ask the second question and uh, uh, second question what are the elements that are impediment, impediments of peace process so let's start from question number one Yes, we heard it. I mean, um, Misha, Danida, you like to start and then Misha, and is it for both, right? Let me start. Thank you for the question. Uh, very interesting question, by the way, because uh, this is a question that I have been thinking about constantly perpetually. Uh, this is very difficult, complex as a process. And the more we work 
in this process, the more I get to understand uh, not only me, but uh, my colleagues, uh, we are doing a, a very important job. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say that, well, initially uh, they took us seriously, but when we assembled once, second time, third time, and we do it at Zoom conferences, at workshops, at, uh, when people um, speak out and they come to conclusions that we need to keep going and to continue this work. And uh, we, we managed to uh, really um, uh, explain uh, where, where we start to listen to people's ideas, people's problems, and then try to explain what could be done around this uh, topic was. So, and uh, how we can really direct questions. Uh, this is really dependent upon the outcome, how we do the process. And, uh, well, initially we were perceived quite skeptically, but now I can tell you that there are, uh, there, there are many people who understand the necessity of us uh, to continue working because uh, there are some campaigns uh, online and they see us uh, as um, someone who really think about solutions and they also uh, get along with us well uh, I don't. I don't mean anonymous people, but I. I'm talking about just regular citizens who listen to us and talk to us, and they under, underline that we really uh, benefit a lot, or uh, we. Uh, there's only a narrow. Um, narrow um, spring between us as a border, right? And that's why the necessity of dialogue, peace, the necessity of um, relationship, interaction, uh, due to the project that uh, uh, we have, this platform, and it creates um, uh, the process that we can engage more and more people. This is not an easy thing to do at all, but this, this uh, takes um, constant uh, exchange of views, listening. It takes very good listening skills. Uh, we don't have only workshops. We have uh, like evening saloons and over 500 interviews we have conducted and I haven't seen a single person who said, why do you do that? And this is useless. What we do is really, really important. Daira, thank you. Uh, Michel, maybe short so that we can also come to the second. Uh, I'll try to be brief first. Uh, where the process is being changed. Uh, yes, this is being changed in every, each of us, and this dramatization of war is being changed also. You actually, when you uh, listen to those who went through uh, tragic wars, they basically uh, tell us the uh, this uh, horror uh, that war brings. And the more we listen to people, uh, we, the, the less we uh, actually think of repeating it. Uh, as for the dialogue and process, what is really difficult is basically 
to accept accept the question and uh, still uh, not to go on and not to get into alternative sort of um, alternative um, solutions. So to me, uh, who has been participating in this process, uh, there is no simple answer to uh, these complex questions. So thank you for this uh, very interesting questions. It's a, maybe the second question, or maybe even a third. If there are 50 in, maybe we can cover a bit more than two. Hmm? Second question. What are the uh, impediment impediments for me, peace uh, promotion and peace support? Uh, and second question to dalila it is in english uh, i will read it in english Can the people do instead? Пожалуйста, вы можете пояснее и помедленнее это сказать? No, it's at. Do you hear me? I think it didn't went through to Dalila. Yes, yes, yes. yes it's that I... maybe we say the question simply in Russian, you know, directed to her. Okay. <laughs> Ну, прежде всего, спасибо огромное за вопрос. Я работаю с молодыми людьми, я знаю их настроение, я отслеживаю их уже более 25 лет. Если первое время молодые люди вообще не хотели слышать о Грузии, о грузинской молодежи, абсолютно ничего, то я вижу, как постоянно и постепенно меняется это настроение. They never wanted to talk about this, they never wanted to uh, actually, they're ba badly informed uh, about Georgian uh, use. So our use do not really know much about uh, Georgian use. Uh, so they, I, I would be for um, them, uh, so I would only welcome if they meet uh, uh, more regularly, because in 10, 15 years, they will be leading our na nations. So, so the more they know about each other, it would be better. Uh, so they cannot really change much uh, here at this stage, uh, even uh, or, or uh, especially in pol political issues, but they can do they can do um, much more amongst themselves as the generation, and they can do really much for uh, peace building in future. And I um, believe that um, uh, that they have to meet each uh, other. Uh, regularly. I am very sorry that there are no uh, platforms and I don't really want to go back to uh, this uh, um, logistical issues. And uh, we are very um, squeezed in uh, um, squeezed in uh, geographically and we our passports are invalid and uh, our youngsters cannot really travel and uh, we would really like to uh, our uh, used to meet each other as uh, often as possible.
if there is one question, especially to you, so I will read it. Uh, so the question is, what was the reaction from Abkhaz community to, to the campaign you are mentioning? Uh, how it worked? Could you please change the channel because it doesn't work? Okay. Um, so we have one more last question. Uh, we will take one more question as the last one. This is to Inal, question to Inal. Inal, please tell us, uh, what does it take to uh, start dialogue between Georgia and Abkhazia and what would be the um, um, main points that you need to start with? I think for dialogue, uh, well, considering what Dalila has said, I'm more pragmatic in this way. And I think uh, there should be some movement from above. Uh, it's not uh, from down up, but from up down. 
uh, it's not just like we all for peace and but we need to look into social um, channels and uh, social media and see what is really uh, bothering people and in Georgian uh, Abkhaz conflict it is important to um, go back to political process which uh, both in Tbilisi or Sehum, Suhumi so they have to take responsibility and start uh, negotiations and 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 when the war was over in 1994 re, uh, negotiations started uh, but now we don't see anything like that now uh, this conflict has become some kind of an element of uh, internal political fight in both sides unfortunately and uh, the Geneva format, uh, it was created uh, after August war, when it was clear that all the formats that had existed before under UN auspices or uh, OSCE and all these uh, uh, mandates didn't work or do not work anymore and Gene Geneva discussions is something also um, temporary and or transitional and well they suggested and and of course we all agreed because and and Georgians agreed because it's convenient for them so uh, they don't have anything uh, more than uh, suggesting Abkhazia to uh, join back to uh, Georgia. Uh, so, but the conflict in Karabakh um, is not enough to show that military is always, military prevails always. Basically, um, we have two, two different contexts here. In war between Karabakh and Azerbaijan, it's, uh, um, Russia could not really figure out um, the which side they basically uh, support for. So, well, if we take uh, Georgia and Russia, they are uh, still enemies. And if there is a war between uh, uh, Georgia and Russia now, uh, Georgia and Russia now, it would be over uh, sooner than in 2008 and with worse consequences. And, and um, so it's not because um, government changed, no, it's just pragmatic uh, process. And, and that's why I believe it is important to, um, uh, do to initiate uh, political will coming uh, from above uh, so that we know that um, initiative comes from those who can make difference, can make a difference. So uh, if um, there's an initiative which cannot really change anything, then uh, why bother? So in this case, uh, maybe at the, if not from the above, maybe at the expert level, you can't really make this dialogue as a, as a, as a subject of uh, very broadly represented. Uh, and discuss it at the social uh, media platforms because you will get uh, something really um, bad, well, something really unproductive. So I'm trying to uh, analyze it as uh, along with uh, what I basically uh, see. So if uh, in Georgian society, There's people uh, 
uh, want to actually uh, make a change, they have to uh, influence their own government. So uh, Abkhaz side has already um, shown its readiness to uh, start negotiation. And I think Georgians mis, um, um, misunderstood this. So uh, we need to start from the above and the rest will just uh, um, come along, okay. if you like. Well, thanks for this. I mean, it's fascinating discussion. Also the last point in our made, the new political will from above. It's always good if it's there, but we see both in Abkhazia and uh, Georgia also um, that the basis, the city society has definitely influence on politicians. And we'll see, I think it's a dynamic, we'll see from above or top down or down up, as you said. There are really interesting interlinkages and to discuss and I can only say, to conclude this, I mean, the Burko Foundation is definitely having an approach that works from down up. And we will see how constructive it is, and we will see where it brings us. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends, I thank you very much for this um, interesting discussion. I hope I found it very interesting. It's for me just the beginning. I hope for you too. And um, I think it's very important that these discussions are being done more in public because there is a lot of skepticism in both societies about initiatives that are always operating under Chatham House rules or that pretend that experts in closed rooms can uh, solve the issue. I believe, and the Berger Foundation believes that we need more transparency and more openness in these discussions. Also, to experience the diversity of views and opportunities. In this respect, I really like to thank all of you, Dalila, Inal, Oleg, Misha, Ucha. Thanks a lot to Itzat for the questions and to the team behind the scene, to our interpreters. It was not always easy, but it's fascinating to see how technique makes this kind of meetings possible. The super last question I have is that what happened to, the, to this questionnaire we made? Did it work? It worked very well. I mean, unfortunately, we cannot show that result. But uh, just to summarize today, uh, around 250 people joined to us. And now we can also see it. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. So people also can see it. And uh, so 52% were from South Caucasus, uh, 36 from Europe and other regions, 12%. And uh, almost half of them were peace builders and 3% and uh, decision makers and uh, another half and other. Oh, so, thanks for this. Thank you very thanks much. For this Ladies and gentlemen, at the, you know, the audience, I hope you enjoyed it. I say thank you to all of you and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.